Hi, this is Dr. Bland, um, Elma Bland. I want to cover some topics today um, on ethical instructions and considerations. And these will be available for you. I do apologize. I have um, a cough today. <clears throat> trying to deal with it. Ethical instructions will be found in Isaiah, and I'm going to cover chapter 56, and um, try to take it through chapter 59. The video caption, I do not want to streamline it for more than an hour, so I probably will need to break, you know, split the video, or just come back and, and start from the next chapter. But what I want to cover today um, are ethical instructions. Give account the Holy Bible um, you, is found in Isaiah, and um, Isaiah was a prophet. He wasn't. He was not a false prophet. But it's a book of the prophet Isaiah, of which he witnessed. Uh, Jehovah's case against Judah and many other um, experiences as a prophet, a follower of Jesus Christ, our Lord Savior. And um, it covers quite a big Isaiah chastisement before blessing um, the visions of our future kingdom, Jehovah's vineyard, and the six woes upon Israel. But what I want to cover is I want people to, to take note to what you're seeing in this video. You're seeing me here and you're wondering, you know, I wonder if she's a real doctor, right? So these are things that we, we want to know if the person, Dr. Velma Bland, is a real doctor. Now, there's many doctor titles. We have doctors in philosophy, doctors in medicine. We have doctors who are studying um, physical therapy. Um, we have doctors in ophthalmology um, who are, 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 are doctors who prescribe your, your eyeglasses for you. Um, doctor, we have doctors who become surgeons who are uh, in cardiology. Uh, uh, doctors in obstetrician, these are DOs. We have MDs, medical doctors. And doctors in philosophy, doctors in education. So we have many different doctors. Now, what you see here is you see me here. I live in the state of Florida. It's very hot. And you see me here with the shorts on and the t-shirt. So I'm one of those type of doctors that are down to earth. You might see me walking around in the supermarket with some jeans on and sneakers and a baggy t-shirt. And my hair might not look like I came from the hairdresser. I'm just a down to earth person. I am not the type of person that glamorizes, but I love to have very nice things. I love jewelry. And um, when I, you know, purchase anything of value, I want to make sure it's different and I want to make sure that no one else has it. We as a people, men and women, or young adults who are developing into adults, we suffer with identity and self-actualization because people are continuously are trying to astound you to be something that you do not recognize yourself uh, taking part in these type of characteristics. And, you know, you may get named and labeled and given account me sitting here with shorts on with my legs out. I'm not supposed to do this and I'm not supposed to that, but I feel this way, you know, who cares? You know, if you care more about looking at my legs and listening to the message, then we might want to question, where are your head? Where are your focus? Because um, it doesn't matter if you find um, a professor comes in with big holes in the jeans and a t-shirt. He, he, he is a professor and he graduated with a doctorate degree. So he, you know, his clothing does not make a, does not identify him with anything other than Professor, as an example, Johnson or something, 
He's a very intelligent professor. But why do he wear those type of clothing? Because he's down to earth and he might be those type of professors who might go um, into the, the, into the um, fields or something of his, his, of his expertise and just walking around and he wants to be comfortable. You know, you wear a suit and tie. These are CEO businessmen, uh, white collar dudes, you know, that stay clean all day and they go and they have lunch and they drink wine and, and they come back to work and, and you know, they don't need to, these are, are professionals who are uh, entrepreneurs, sole proprietors of, of big Fortune 500 companies, or those 100 companies that they're now designing now, that uh, does not answer to the employees, but the employees does not have the hierarchical command to go directly to the owner of the business. Um, we, we have staircase levels of management supervision. Then we have the bottom of the crop here. Um, these are, you are the seed that the um, CEO planted to grow within the, within the union, within the division, within the institution, or within the corporation, or incorporation, or a subsidiary of other companies who merge together and who monopolize as mergers because they're, they are in need of someone with credit, with the clout, with the, with the references, with the, with the businesses, with the clients and with the markets and with the um, leadership. So then what, what one might do is invest maybe $50,000 into a company and now we have our own office and desk and we may have five people working for us within that little space we, that we're renting because we are investing in a company. So it, these are figure, these are power figures and these are players who are involved in different roles and each has responsibilities to contribute to that, to that goal of, of that company. Um, so basically what, what is very important to you, uh, whatever interest group you're involved in might not take interest to other folks. So now we have to table our, our differences and find out what is it that we are going to decide, you know, as far as working together in the near future because um, you have an office here, you're paying $50,000, I mean, that's okay, but I want somebody that's going to send me some business. You see, so these are mergers. Um, I need somebody that's going to uh, uh, grow and leave, you know what I mean? Because I got somebody that got something going on that is going to invest $100,000 to my company. And so now I need I need you to to move out. But how 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 is it that the the owner of this business is going to get this person out if there's a contract? So then we wait until that contract completes, and and that's the respectable thing to do. And this is where a lot of people cross each other, and and they and, and they're um, involved in crossfires because they breach contracts and agreements, and and they uh, uh, the persons who are Breaching these contracts might feel that they have power, but they're uneducated with, with the implications of the law regarding business practices. And these business practices are, are legal practices. They're not under the table practices. Um, I want to answer some questions that I, um, I've been hearing. Um, I don't know who these folks are, but they're always outside out here trying to talk to me when I'm in, in the video. Um, I'm a woman, you know, and I remember when I was like teenager, uh, teenage years, um, 15, 16, 17, being approached by men in their 30s and 40s, okay, and I was very unhappy with that because I felt like these men thought that I was stupid or, or naive, and they approached me because they felt I was weak and that I would, would easily follow them into, the, into, the, into their little web of, of deception. And I did sometimes make, you know, inaccurate decisions on doing, you know, exactly what I was told just to be with a guy. But, you know, I already had a father and I didn't need another. I wanted a friend and then build upon that friendship. It takes time and, and sometimes people do not want to wait because they got somebody else on the fence that will jump in bed with them right away because you're wasting my time. I want, I just want you as a bed partner. And if you do not provide the 
the services that I need, whether I pay you or not. There's plenty of people waiting, you know. So now a young woman would have to distinguish to whether or not she is going to play that role. Okay, so if you get involved with something like that, then now your reputation is in, in, in jeopardy because you trusted this person that came to you as Satan came to Eve and, and, and discouraged her away from the facts that to eat of the tree of, 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 uh, 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 of knowledge, okay, it will, you will not surely die. God just, you know, doesn't want you to get, to gain the wisdom right now. And that's because God wanted his children, Adam and Eve, to wait until he was ready to give them that knowledge, like our parents might wait. If you are adopted, they're not going to tell you you're adopted until you're prepared to, to be able to um, deal with that. They might wait until you and, and your parents, who you thought were your parents, were your adopted parents, may wait until you're 18 years old and ready to uh, attend college to let you know um, that I, I, I don't want you to, to think that I'm a bad person, but I'm not your mother or something like that. Your real mother is such and such, and you've been adopted, and I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you, but I wanted to wait until you reached a certain age before I let you know. So now... This is a rude awakening. This is like a, someone just performed a TKO on, on, on a person that thought that, you know, you were my mother or you were my father. So these are other, other, other topics that might cause um, some problems, might be problematic how to approach your children that really um, has been, you know, they, they, they have, they, they, thought these children you raised thought that you were their parents but they um somehow the children that you raised or adopted might be family members too heard it through the grapevine through gossipers in the family that that um oh Thelma's not your mother or, you know blah, blah 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 so you know as an example and then now what has happened is before you reach that topic someone else got there and this is what happened between God and Satan Satan reached the topic with his children before God was able to let them know that the tree of life is where you should he did tell them this is where you're going to eat in the midst of the garden but do not eat from that tree because you'll surely die because knowledge is power and you must understand knowledge before you gain that power and power gives you connections to other power figures, as I spoke about in the beginning, is running into different people throughout your life. Some of them are not to be trusted. They will kill you over time. And some of them, you might not, the people you are meeting who are powerful, may have hidden agendas and, and they may want to help you, but they do not want to give you the total outcome of your of your end now you now but now you are in a contract and you can't get out so we know those type of organizations um but when we're meeting men and women as a young people and we're growing into the union or going into these divisions and these arenas of professionalism you're you will run into people who throw their money around and um you know this is not state legislatures trying to pass a bill here because if, if you're not convincing, then you're not, you, you, the, that person proposing a bill uh, as a commissioner, as a state legislature, will not receive the funds, but might get the bill passed. But the funds might be a little delayed until we get, you know, through that waived uh, 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 vote. So what we have here, um, men and women are, are, are introduced and to these professional arenas where there are large divisions or uh, people who are, are practicing secularism and men and women who feel comfortable with it and they're, and they're vain because of where they're, they're glorifying themselves and you know they're, they're splashing around their money and, and it's really money that they receive in, in advancement, advanced pay that they get borrowed because I am a, a, a model or because I am um, a professional player and I need a loan. And, and they know that I am professional sportsman and I can get that loan because of my record 
of my 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 profile has proven that I I am have a good track record. I'm good for this money that I need alone. Um, but then now we run into rich women, rich men. Some some of these uh, women and men and women and women might um, have other sexual preferences of which we call disoriented sexual disorientation or preferences that are um, uncommon for heterosexuals who, who has not tested and trial or become a little bit curious about different genders, same genders or, or, the, or opposite sex relationships, sexual relationships. Um, people throw their money around and uh, just know where you are because um, you are amongst the dog world when, when you run into these type of arenas and when you are amongst the dog world everyone must keep their mouths shut and if anything happens to you no one is want, no one that the person's not anyone that you came across encountered throughout that party or throughout that event will remember you because now we need to speak to authorities to find out, you know, what happened to this one, what happened, or uh, did you see, and they're not, they're, they're not speaking about it because they cannot or else, you know, um, there are rules. And these are rule, rule of thumb, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, you know, they always got these type of rules and, you know, and um, as an adult, you know, it's, it's your right of choice and, and, and I would approach the matter, you know, if someone wants to buy me and, and, and I'm single, um, you know, I would let them know that um, right up front that I do not want to mislead you. And I, I, I didn't know that I fascinated you to such extreme, you know, but, you know, if you really think that I'm worth being in your life and, you know, I, I didn't know you felt that way about me. Um, this is a little bit too early for me to decide, but I definitely am interested in getting to know you better. Um, but once you take, you know, I, I really am. But once you, um, I do not want to take gifts from you because I don't want you to think that I'm like the other women out there. Because once you start giving me gifts, then now you're taking me, you're hyping me up and you're buying me. And then when I'm involved with you, now one day I lose you and then you bought me and I, I lose you and then it's going to really destroy me. So it's one of the reasons why I would not like to accept gifts right away unless that person and I, we have had intimate relationships with one another at least a good six months or longer. So now, you know, you, you, you're, you're sort of like... Um, Spoiled me, and you're giving me, and, and 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 I'm being pampered with gifts. I feel special because now you've chosen me. But then, what is going to happen? You know, um, well, well, you know, that's something you do not want to discuss with that person right then. But what will happen in 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 the future? You know, well, that I'm getting all these gifts. Um, do I need to portray the same reflect? upon you the same way forever because you know I don't want to miss out on anything in the near future because this is a beautiful gift I mean wow you know I really love this I never had anyone to purchase anything such of such value value to me before you or this is invaluable because you can't put a price on what is special it's unique I, I love it you know and then you make sure when a special occasion arise in the near future with that person birthdays whatever you know give back because in order to receive you you must give and but I I would not encourage anyone to to sell themselves just to please somebody overnight now it it depends on if you really need the money okay um what type of agreement is this I mean do I need to do this on a regular basis? I mean, uh, 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 um, I mean, you know, you, you should have questions because 
folks out there are getting involved with or, or, or older women or cougars and they are pulling in these young men and they are, are blackmailing you with money and then when you want to date a younger woman and you want to now they're in a the way they're going to start harassing that woman so you need to think you know what would be the outcome if I set money from an older woman and I'm a younger guy and she really likes me she really wants me but I can't have a baby with her and I don't have any children what's going to happen when I decide to see someone else so now we have a fatal attraction probably on the way in the making because the same way with an older guy you know after you're with them for a while they may feel threatened and insecure because a younger guy you know, is around you or work with you or you, you've seen with them at lunch. And so now he's threatened because of a younger guy. Or she's threatened because of an older, mature woman who understands life better. Who doesn't need to have a man around her 24 hours a day to feel complete. So now, what type of woman do you want to have around you? I mean the the person that you've had in the past why did you break up with them it was it because she was too t too um, too attached to you when you wanted to to have some freedom um what what happened so are you going to make the same mistake with the next woman vice versa are you going to make the same mistake with the next man man because women are also out there taking advantage of men too and their you know their their beauty and everything and then they have an attitude and they they're trained to believe that um, their attitudes need to be nasty and stinky you know like a stinky a smelly attitude is a beautiful woman that doesn't respect a man no matter what he's he does for her she does not uh, appreciate anything she's an ingrate and these are the type of women that I don't even understand why they're even in relationships. How do they get married? Because, you know, here I am trying to play a role that they want me to play, and I'm following all the rules, and I'm doing everything he's telling me, but I can't hold on to him. And so that's one of the reasons right, why you will find many women that doesn't, they have, that, that they're, you know, their, their character and their decision making in these relationships they don't really care because I know you're going to dump me anyway so I'm just going to be a really nasty woman to you because you're, you're going to dump me anyway so who are we dealing with you know that is a good question if you want to accept gifts from them um, what, are, what, is it, what is it that I need to do to get this money again I mean it, this, this can be seen as male prostitution now this can be seen as prostitution this could be a you know I don't want to get involved with illegal um, organizations because now my reputation and and, and and my future career might be placed in, in jeopardy because we don't know who we're dealing with so those are questions that that you need to ponder on it's not hard at all you know do not fall in love when you're so young like that when you have other options out there and do not I would not get with immature people, you know, and try to start a relation or rebuild them or to groom them or mold them into what I want them to be because we were all given, we were all innately born with our own individuality and we, most of us men and women, we grew up, we've been through trials, we understand uh, why we're naive or we want to be your friend and you, and you don't want a friend that's smiling and laughing and talking to everybody. Oh, don't talk to her because I don't like her. But see, when you encounter a friend like that, you want to be yourself and you can't be yourself because don't talk to her, I don't like her. And then now you need to, well, why do you like her? I think she's a nice person. Well, I just don't like her. So why is it that you're with this type of person? So that would be the person that's going to destroy your life. And I'll leave you with that, man or woman. I'm going to go ahead and cover ethical instructions, and I'm just going to do 56 because I did um, chapter 56. I'm moving to 57. 
Um, one thing I do not like is that people do not take, when people do not take life seriously. I am a very serious person when it regarding life. God has given us um, vital organs that we must take care of, and I do not play games with my mind. I don't like people playing games with my mind. People that play games with the mind, I, I don't deal with these people. They're laughing, joking all the time. I don't deal with these people. Um, I don't like it. It, I, I don't like it because I need someone that I can confide in that's going to be there for me and give me the right answer. I don't want people laughing and joking and thinking that when I'm saying something is funny. If I am saying something and it's funny, it, you know, and I go back, I always go back and review my videos and evaluate my videos just to see. And I found myself laughing and you know, sometimes nearly wet myself or wet myself laughing. So, um, but... It's common. People do it all the time. Um, they go back and, and retract a video, delete something, or they leave it. It's flawless. And then we wait and see who's going to respond, and we get one view, right? So if we're getting one view, it doesn't mean to stop what you're doing. It means that people are watching your videos in large groups, and one person provided the, the caption while everyone around the home watched. So that's what we call people who are, 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 are not, they're not supporting you. And they're just in your videos to ridicule you and to laugh and chastise you. And it's because you have something that's special that they can't have. They could never have it. They could never be you. So be you. You know, um, if you have to go left and then come back to the right, uh, go up the stairs and then end up being sent back down, it's an experience. Journalize it. Make sure that you do not make the same mistake again. Because many of us has been up on that mountain and we're sent back down to the ground. And it's because very few of us are up there on the mountain because people, most likely people, they do not wanna they do not want to um to hang around on the mountain because there's no one up there but maybe a few people that they may not be able to get along with. So, um, where are you? Where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do in your life? How are you gonna get there? Who's going to finance you? Who are going to support you? Can you finance yourself in case you cannot find supporters? Um, what, is it, what is it about you that maybe you can change so that you will um, be more influ influential to other people? If you're not influencing anybody, it's because you are in the wrong target. You're, you're targeting the wrong people. Because there are, um, as I knocked on doors for about six months and sold magazines, and it wasn't prostitution, it was sales. Um, each time the door slammed in my face, I said, God bless you. Once the door slammed in my face, I said, God bless you. And I went to the next door. Slammed in my face so hard until I can feel the wind stang me, slap me. Wow. Wow. What, you know. Hi, I'm Thelma. I, wow. Hi, I'm Thelma. Oh, wow. So I had to sit in front of the mirror and write my script over and sit in front of the mirror and talk just like I'm sitting in front of the YouTube UCAM now. I understand I got an audience back there that worked for Cyberly. Hi guys, how you doing? I have on clothing today. You don't have to call Nova Southeastern University. I'm at home. Thank you. Anyways, um, what I'm saying here is that when one door closes, every time you get fired, when you're leaving that exit interview or, or if you're being if you're progressing to the next level, there's also an exit interview in, in progress. Um, because it's time to move to the next level. But if you're being if you're terminated and um, and you and, and you really did you know, didn't deserve to be terminated, all you need to do is just, just you know, verify are you am fired? You fired me? Are you sure I'm fired? It says, well, I didn't commit misconduct, did I? Oh, we just, you know, we're downsizing and such and such. And such. Well, could you put it in writing? Because I don't want any problems because now I, I need to go and file unemployment. Oh, no, don't worry. You know, it's, you know our company, we're downsizing. Well, why did you downsize me? I'm on the top of the list, you know. Then, you know, now you sound like you're trying to bargain. You're, you're coming at the last minute. You're out of time. Because they, they've already decided that you're fired. And if they do not want you to, to want to listen to you, but then, you know, what you can see is this, well, I don't know why you fired me. And then you tell her, you know, tell that person how you feel about them because I never liked you either. 
You are a terrible manager. You laugh and you giggle, you're immature. So you can go out the door with that and, and stand up and, and put your head in, in the air and walk right at the door, but make sure that you're fired when you do it. Because um, I would say, you know, when you're really hurting here, when somebody really destroy you, like you worked hard and then people fire you and tell you to downsize you and you see silly people laughing every day that always calling in sick and you got to pick up the pieces and work overtime to help them. And you're fired and then they're still sitting there. You, you can let that manager or that supervisor know as you're walking out that door how you feel about them. You do not need to curse them and blaspheme them, but you can tell them, well, since you fired me, I feel insulted about it, and I want you to know that I never did really like working here anyways. I just needed a job. And stand up and walk out. You have the right to do that because now you have what? You have a two-way communication process that has been completed. And you cannot, you cannot um, lose your unemployment unless you've only worked there less than three months because now you do not qualify for, un for unemployment insurance. But if you work there for four, five, 10, 20, 15 years and you're fired and you put up with so much, you were reserved, you weren't promoted and you just stayed there, let them know. I, I never really did like you either. I just needed a job and get up and walk right out that door. I mean, Christianity and religion has nothing to do about how you feel because it says here in the Bible, Jesus, he, he, he said I wasn't good either. There's only one good, and that's our Lord God in heaven. You'll find that if not in Mark 3, please search it up. <laughs> because sometimes I, I don't get it right either, but it's there. I'm, I'm serious, it's there. So um, I'm going to cover ethical instructions. And it's uh, 12 verses, 1 through 12. Um, Isaiah 56 chapter. Thus saith the Lord... Keep ye judgment and do justice. Let me get a little light over here. I get light. I need to get the chandelier put back up. It sort of it had like um, a spark one day. Okay, here we go. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Now he says salvation is near, is near to come. Salvation is singular, so is and are, uh, 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 are these, we're called, um, are they adverbs, Let's see if I have my dictionary nearby, um, is and are, I believe they're adverbs. That's something I need to to check up on. But um, they're not pronouns. The pronouns are I, we, they, us, he, she. But he's saying, but but I still are saying, and the reason I say. I, I sometimes I come up, I say, God said, because it sounds like God, so he's a prophet. Um, that, um, but my salvation is, is, is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Because, um, thus saith the Lord, because the Lord said it, okay? So you go back up. When you do not understand, go back up, because, because the Lord said it. Keep ye judgment. Don't tell me what to do. Because only God judges me. Because the Lord, the Lord said, keep ye judgment and do justice. You know, just go ahead and do the right thing. You see? For my salvation, my salvation and your salvation and the next door neighbor's salvation and everybody else's salvation, It's near the car. Because that my means everybody. 
and my righteousness to be revealed. Okay, so as you read in this, we are in, uh, it sounds like first person, but it really is third person. Blessed is the man that doeth this. See, remember I said, it's everybody, here we go. Blessed, blessed, you will be blessed if you follow. Verse 156, that follow my commands. And the son of man that live whole on it. Okay, blessed. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Now, now remember, I spoke about the, um, I spoke about the um, roles that we're playing in different organizations. We're involved in groups, memberships with this. Um, fraternity, sorority, church, and then we have special groups that we're in, family, which are special occasions, family reunions, things like that. Those are not membership groups. These are, are, are bipartisan groups because you are in agreement with family or with your husband, your marriage agreement. So these are, are agreements that you can also hold with major political parties too. When you're tabling bills, you know, we, we are going to, we, we will have ethical consideration and do what? Justice. We're going to do the right thing. When everybody does the right thing, no one suffers from it. So, blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that live hold on it, that, and a son of man that live hold on it, that's Jesus that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Now, some people celebrate Saturday as the Sabbath day, and some people celebrate Sunday. We got now a national Sunday law, and that's the New World Order. The New World Order um, identifies with the New World when Jesus, I mean, I'm sorry, when um, God um, carried Noah's Ark across the high seas and flooded waters and, and rested him upon Mount Ararat and Mount Ararat and the in Armenia and the Arabs and Iran and Iraqis and all of the Middle East has claimed this land as being holy. So um, that's the new world order is that they, there are agreements that we are trying to reach between the Middle East, They're the third world nation or, or, or if you want to call it that are the, the chosen people of God. And these are Abraham's generation. Abraham's generation are really everybody from the time then until now. But um, now people are provisional, uh, their the dominions are, are, are dominating other religions because they were the chosen people. Because Noah's Ark landed here. It didn't land in America. It didn't land over in Africa. It landed in the Middle East. As Africa is the continent which is on the west side of where Noah's Ark rested. So that's your new world order. Because the new world um, um, came upon all of the sins of the world from the time of Adam and Eve. And we went through uh, Lot. We went through, um, 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 I'm sorry, we went through Noah. And, and, and his family members, we went through Cain, we went through uh, Seth. Um, I mean, it's, it, you will find it all in Genesis, but what's confusing sometimes, it seems like Lot and all of them were before the flood. And that's, and that's, some, that's one of the reasons why I tell you that I am not an ordained minister. I am reading and I'm trying to understand it. So what we want to do is check. Was Lot and Noah, I mean, was um, Lot and, um, and Noah is before the flood and after the flood. But we want to know who were before the flood is this the question. So all you need to do is just go into the generations because we want to, Stay focused when you're reading the Bible. 
Now, pastors are, are, are holding sermons all their lives. And they're coming to my videos and finding a new life because the way I think. But I'm, I'm not asking for donations, no. So what we're going to do is go to the Old Testament. Genesis, page 3. And then Exodus is page 33. Okay, so now we'll go to maybe the first 10 pages. And just read the headings. And you would know who was there before the flood and who came about after. So look at the names. We have Adam and Eve. And Lucifer really, he was mentioned in the beginning. But he, he's, you know, he was there before everybody. Because God threw him down out of the heavens. Lucifer made it to heaven. You can too. Temptation of Eve, the first sons of Adam and Eve, the first murder, history of Cain. So you just read the headings. The family of Seth, the flood. Okay, there we go. So Seth. Let's see, Jared, Enos. And they're talking about, okay. And this is Genesis 4th chapter. No, fifth chapter, sixth verse. And Seth lived in 105 years and begat Enos. But this is where you will find the generation before the flood. Okay, because after the flood, now we need to know who begat who, meaning begat, begotten as in conceived uh, with the helpmate. So we have Seth, we have Enos, we have Canaan, we have uh, Mahalia, uh, Mahalalil. Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lameth, Lamech, Noah. Noah, it speaks about Noah in chapter 5, verse 29. And he called his name Noah. So Lamech, lived, uh, 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 Lamech was Noah's father. L-A-M-E-C-H. So if you, say for instance, you're with a child and you don't know a name, you, you, don't, you haven't thought of a name to, to name your child, just go through the first generations before the flood and pick a name. These, they have some very good names in here. Uh, Lamech. And you have, um, after that, Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So now we know before the flood, all of the names of the people of the first generation from the time God created heaven and earth. And, and you will find that in chapter 5, Genesis, and it is uh, between verses 6 and 31. And then after the flood, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives were the only survivors of the flood. So what happened to all of these people? They had already died. Seth was di died already because he was 105 years of age. And it speaks about when he died. But what I find here is, is Enoch, E-N-O-C-H. -E he walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Uh, he lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. He was the only one that, that lived the same amount of lifespan as we are living here on earth in the, what, the 21st century or the 20th century going into the 21st century. So what happened to Enoch? You know, that's the question. That's one of the questions that I had, had um, asked. Those of you who were following me, if you are in, you know, ask your pastor if he could tell you what happened to Enoch. Enoch... We don't see a, a time he died at all. It said he lived 60 and five, five years. Live could be I lived on earth. But it doesn't say he died at all. But the rest of the, uh, of the generation of Adam and Eve, really Seth, because Seth was first, because Seth replaced Abel, because Cain killed Abel. 
But I, I always question, were, they, were, at, were Abel and Cain twins? You know, because you always have a twin that's evil and a twin that's really sweet. And that's another question I wanted to, 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 to follow up on. It doesn't say in the Bible, but I'm, you know, it's kind of weird. But then I always believed that Cain were cursed because Eve, after she and Adam, um, gained the tree of knowledge. And once you get knowledge, now we do what? We fornicate. All right. So now Cain was the firstborn. So now I think Cain was cursed because maybe she was with child and she was in that environment. You know, in the environment of uh, uh, she trusted Satan. So if you are in that environment, then that means that you are uh, uh, possibly will be taken or overthrown. You can be taken, but you can also dethrone the next guy before they get you. But what are we doing? What are we doing there? You don't feel comfortable. You don't like how everybody's watching you. You could end up on a plate tonight at the barbecue grill because you know you're you're in these organizations. You don't know what's up because you're new and you, no one no one's informed you about it. You got to find out the hard way. And if you survive, don't go back. So that's what I mean about you know who was there before and who was there after. We don't come back to that another time. All right. So verse three. Uh, neither let the son of the strange that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So, God doesn't want us to share too much information because we do not know other people because we have to think about our complications, our instructions of ethics, and as well as to consider ethical considerations because not everyone are going to do the right thing. And, 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 and he's, he's saying here in, in verse 2, blessed are those who are doing the right thing in the name of my son Jesus. Because he said, blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it. So in the name of, of my son Jesus. So um, he doesn't want us to share too much information, but, some, but today people know how to come in your house and, and find out what they want through scanning and looking in your house with spy cams and listening through listening devices as 1995 advertised on the television station. So, I mean, we have uh, so much problems now today because God said, do not covet against thy neighbor's house. He's not only asking us not to come in and change things around to our pleasing, um, to make things pleasing to the, to, to the eye of the beholder, but he's telling you do not steal, do not kill, do not um, uh, uh, take someone's um, valuables or their wife or their husband away from them. All that is in thou should not, thou should not uh, uh, covet against thy neighbor's house. Love thy neighbor. He wants us to love thy neighbor no matter what. Because these are commandments that were given to Moses' law. Um, that, and, and so once we violate them and, and we uh, commit these adultery and all of this fornication and, and, um, and become murderous and, and, and evil, um, you can't just only go and say, oh, before I die, oh, forgive me, Lord, and I'm going to heaven. Oh, no, you're not. Because you didn't even think one time for the past two years to say thank you Jesus for waking me up this morning. I am so thankful I recommend you into my life. I know I haven't spoke to you in so many amount of years but I'm coming to you today Lord I'm down on my knees and I'm begging you please to change me. I don't know what's wrong with me. All I do is talk about Velma Bland all I do is just pick on her every day. I don't know I hate her. I can't figure out what it is. I just don't like that woman and I just need you to change me Lord and if you're talking about me all day and you haven't talked about Jesus, why should Jesus listen to you that first time you came to him? Verse 4, For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs, the eunuchs are those who are, God are seeking 144,000 
virgin men. At the in, in the last days, it's just in Revelation. I, I I read it. If you've been following my video, somewhere between 19 and 20 revelations. He's looking for 144,000 units, virgin boys. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. It, it could be possible. Who knows? He didn't ask for girls. He looking no, and why are he looking for these men? He looking for them because he looking for men that didn't allow women to defile them. Now what happened there? He took us back to when? Genesis first chapter. Because what happened? Eve let Satan defile her minds. Pseudo psychology is when you somebody tell you that you're psychotic and you got to figure out, well, am I? I didn't know I was psychotic. What did I do? That was inappropriate that you think that I'm psychotic. Are you a licensed psychiatrist? Who made you my doctor? I never remember hiring you. My insurance carrier didn't refer me to you. These are people who play pseudo psychology with your mind. Because they get large groups and they tell them, oh, she's crazy. She's stupid. She this, she stank. She's a, a harlot. She's in a, oh, she, I want to talk to her if I was you. Her breath stank. And you go. There's nothing wrong with my breath. These are liars. They, they're convinced. And these are the most influential people in the world. Are Satan. But somebody that wants the best things out of life. And wants to fit in. Can't convince nobody nothing. Because everybody wants to believe Satan over the person that they should listen to. You never seen me doing any of those things. Why my life is this way? Because you made it that way. You don't want to be a part of my life. I can't go around begging you on my knees. I don't want to beg Jesus. I don't, you're not Jesus. You don't want to be with me all the way? Well, thank you. Maybe that's why I'm still alive. Because when I used to follow you, we were the only place we went was to the hotel. And when I used to follow you, the only thing we did was fight all the time. When I was your friend, the only thing we did was stand around and, 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 and the next thing we know, we're laying up in bed with people. That's not what I want to do. I want to go to school. Why you don't have any children? Because maybe I wasn't following behind you. Now you put on blast. Now you put on blast. Nobody like you. Oh, you're this. You got a million people all over the world talking about you. Oh, she nasty. I don't like her attitude. Nasty stuff. Pseudo psychology. If they use these people are condescending, they are, 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 are unfortunate in their own lives, and they want you to follow them and they can't lead you. They can't lead a fly if they have some honey in their hand. The fly wouldn't come over there until you put the honey down. Because if the fly following you and you got a bunch of sweet things in your hand, then you a leader. Give me some flies. I better have something sweet in my hand because I don't want flies following me because they might think I'm a human sepulcher or a corpse. Because they all they do is 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 put people down, and these are the people that you don't you do not want to develop. You can't develop around these people. You want someone that's beneficial and encouraging that's going to empower you. They're going to say something that's going to give you some skill sets, tools that you will be able to take from here, from Thelma, and go over and take from there. And you're not going to compare with me with anybody else. You're going to keep what I gave you, and you're going to keep what they gave you, and you're going to use it if it's what you all about. You're not going to take and compare anything. You're going to take everything from everybody and put it in, in into your head. And if it's what you want to do, if, if you took interest in it and you and, and you believe it's going to help you, then keep it. But don't go around, there, oh, I'm going to take no advice from her if I was you. And I'm a doctor. 
in philosophy and I'm the person past all those exams and you don't want to be my friend, you don't want to be in my group, you don't want to take any advice from me, well then I know where you're going to end up. You're going to end up far, far away from me because I am not following you. As I say here, faded. I may be faded, but right now, because I don't want to get my want want to hatch my eggs too soon. Because we got a lot of people out there. They are trying to bring everybody down with them because they don't have any thought process whatsoever or cognition that will give them any anything to recognize. Because the only thing that they recognize is that he'll say, she say, if I'm not going to that party, um, uh, 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 and hang around, and they're not gonna like me if I don't show up. Okay, the next one we have here. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. And we're talking about what? The Lord. Because if the Lord said, if you choose the things that please me, then I'll bless you. And I just covered that. Choose the things that please the Lord. Stop taking advice from losers. Because they can't, they can't even advise themselves. Maybe that's why they don't want to advise you. Five. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. That's your father's name, your surname. No one can take that away from you if you do not let them. Wear your name well. If your name is F-U-C-K, fuck. Look in, look, in, look in the telephone book. We got F-U-N-K too, fuck. You wanna marry a guy with that, with a last name like that? Yeah. You're in love with him? Now you wear a name, Denise Funk. Six, also the sons of the strange that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. The sons of the strange are people who do not, we don't know yet. They just moved in town and they got a strange name or they, they just come from somewhere and we haven't yet met them. The sons of the strange, okay? Um, also the sons of the strange that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Um, he want us, he will give us an everlasting name and it shall not be cut off from us. Okay, and that name is to be glorified in it because that's your father's name, your father's surname. And the Lord blessed you with that name um, because he's chosen it for you and it pleases him. So when you don't understand, you just go back up. Seven, even them when I bring, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, which are incense, incense, okay? It's not talking about get a goat Burn it, practice sorcery. Incense. There are burnt offerings and there are sacrifices. Okay, incense. Sacrifices as in, I'm giving you $100 in my purse and I don't have any money, I won't get paid, I'm unemployed. That's a sacrifice. There are burnt offerings and there are sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. You bring it up to the pastor, you know, to the altar of the Lord God, Jesus, the house of the Lord. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people, and that's the church, the bride of Jesus. And many of y'all churches out there, I'm sorry, it's not the bride of Jesus, I'm sorry, it's just, but keep trying. 
keep trying. Because I want a Jaguar too. Hey, the Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel safe, yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered into him. So he will gather the outcast of Israel. You know who they are, right? Are they the Palestines? Because the Palestines are complaining. So I posit in an affirmation that it's the Palestines. Of the outcast. Lord God which gathered the outcast of Israel say, Yet will I gather others to him. I will gather others to him. Who are outcasts. Beside those that are gathered unto him. So he will keep bringing them and put them beside. You're an outcast, Vilma. Okay. We're going to gather some more outcasts. They may not be in your unit right now where you live, but there's plenty of them out there. They just don't want you to know. Oh, we so happy. We so rich. We got a thousand dollar tires on my car and I got a, a antique. 1989 with a thousand dollars per tire. I don't work, but I I don't need anything. I'm so rich. These are pretensions of overconfidence. Because why? We got money rolling in, but we don't pay taxes, and we squat. We don't even pay rent. But then, President Obama cannot give you funds because you're around here acting like you're rich. Everybody driving a Mercedes, a Jaguar, you got a Volvo, an Audi, and some of them cars are in my name. They're on my blame. I'm going to get you though. We're going to get it off that road. It's in my name. And we don't even like her. We hate our goods. But we got a car that we somehow sneaked it in our name. In the police department, they don't care. I don't care if you call here. Nobody is going to care about it, Velma. You can complain all you want to. Police is not going to go after that person. But let Velma go and steal a car. We're going to hear it all over them, the whole world. Velma just stole a car. Velma picking her nose. Velma scratching her fanny. Velma farted. Who are you? If that's a Shar Sharia law, please go back where you came from because I don't need it. I want to stick with this. And if you're scared to speak, Get out from around me. I don't want you in my crowd at all. I don't want cowards. Nine, all ye beasts of the field, come to the fire. Yeah, all ye beasts in the forest. So he's calling the beasts to come in the fire to eat you. Because he's outcast too. Ten, his watchmen are blind. Who is that? Like I just told you, the police. They are all ignorant. Now, I didn't say it. He said watchmen are blind and they're all ignorant. It's here. It's right here. Chapter 56, Isaiah. Verse Ten, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber, and eating donuts. 
No offense, police, but I didn't say it. Watchmen are also who? Guards up in the prison. Security guards. I got a what? Panties or short pants? Take your pick. But I'm reading the Bible. But if you want to look at my legs, oh well. If you see some spots, spread the news. Eleven. Yeah, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. And his quarter is what? Quarter deck. Or from his station. Or from his uh, camp. You know? It's there. It's right here. I didn't say it. Don't hate on me. Car. Police car. Phone booth. God gate. My front door. Twelve. This is the last one to get off here. If y'all find I'm dead, y'all know why. <laughs> I turn up missing, you know what? I'm not going to go out the door for a whole week. Twelve. Come ye, say they. And I'm sweating. I'm really serious. I have a chest cold. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm sweating. So I'm going to get off the air right now. I hope you enjoyed me. We're on the last twelve. Twelve, the last verse. Come ye, say they. I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. Now, who are they? Watchmen, and who else? Let's go back up. The sons of the stranger had joined themselves to the Lord <coughs> to serve him. And to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Okay, so these are the people that does not go back to two. Do what? Is it two? No, I'm sorry, go back to one. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment, and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. Number two. Blessed is the man that doeth this. And the son of man that layeth hold on it. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Means Sunday. And or Saturday. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Dirty handed people. Sorcery witchcraft. Killing people. Beating up people. So. God is not only talking about watchmen. He's talking about. Neighborhood watch. Find people who stalking you, staring and spy cam, reporting informants. He's talking about those people as well. Um, but let me go back to my thoughts. Is if the police officers are doing the right thing, is this doesn't apply to, to to police officers, men and women, or soldiers who are surveillance and monitoring places that they need to invade. If you are or if you are go back to one, if you are following the teachings of one of the what the God what God asks you to do, you can go to church with a police uniform. I've seen it. I have. Do not feel like you can't sit up in the Lord's house with a police uniform because you ought to protect and serve and you vowed that you do so and you are to fight crime, not to be a part of the crime. But God is not saying that all of you watchmen, it's just particular people, and we go back to where? 56 verse 1, and those are the people who does not follow, follow the teachings of the Lord is who he's talking about. Whether watchmen, whether ordinary men, whether, you know, a powerful man. So when you're reading the Bible, when you are giving sermons, this is how we must, because we don't want to insult people. 
You know, so we need to go back to what, get and break it up and analyze it, take the data and frame it. And now we know he's talking about those police officers, watchmen, informants, spies, or people who are doing things out there that evil, dirty handed, which um, in verse two, these are the, the professionals, watchmen, of which God and those who are unprofessional are causing lives to be taken away from people because of what? That mouth flapping all the time. Daffy duck, daffy duck. Wah, 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 wah. Daffy duck, daffy duck. Daffy duck used to always talk all the time. And we're talking about a, 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 the, the character, cartoon character. Daffy duck. And we got another one. Ooh, I thought I saw a putty cat. See, we got it all in the cartoon. Because when you die, your spirit is like cartoon. You're supernatural. But when you're in life, in real life, you're flesh and blood. You are not, you are not a, a spirit. You got a spirit inside of you that when you use that spirit is when you're thinking and when you have a, a, a sixth sense that something's going to happen, an unction. Now we have an unction, right? A notion, an unction, a notion, or an instant, or, 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 or we perceive, or, or we felt something, a gut feeling, or butterflies came in our stunt, and we saw a bunch of birds fly by, and they were flapping the wings and making a lot of noise. It's time for you to go now, because that, that's a sign, that's a warning that you need to leave, get out of there, because your life right now is at risk. So in 12... Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. They are the adulterers, the, the, the people who are out there doing things, dirty-handed, evil, wicked things, against the teachings, against God's revelation. And they are not, they're, they're, they're not um, following the justice. That They're not... Um, they're not following the Lord. They're not following what God has given us, the knowledge. Because remember, Satan beat God to the punch with the knowledge. But then in regarding seducing Eve and Adam as well. So now before God got to that stage, which was the eighth day, Satan had already advised him. And that's what people are doing now. They're going all over the world and talking about you. And putting the lies out there that you're this and you're that. And you're trying to become a doctor and you're a whore. Well now they got all these people in the church. People and all these people coming up. And now they want to cast you out. Out of the neighborhood and, and, and lynch you or whatever they want to do. They're witch hunting. Then they find out the last minute that this person lied to you. We got a million people lied to these people. These great people were fooled and they were lied to by someone they trusted. Now how are we going to get her back? How are we going to get her back? Well, you never lost her. What you lost is you lost yourself. You lost your own self-control. You lost your own ethical uh, 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 judgments of which God has given you. That's in it, the individuality by allowing someone to pull you into a web of deception. And now you've got someone sitting there and they're trying to, you're trying to run them away, but they're not going anywhere. So you choose to still stay there and make noise to, to, to bring what? A, 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 a wrath to them that doesn't belong to God because you, God's wrath will come. And when it comes, it's not going to only affect Velma. It's going to affect everybody at one time. And that's something we need to be careful with is to try to be God and to try to bring God's wrath to somebody when it's not your wrath. You have no right to judge other people and to bring somebody down because you don't like them because you're scared they're going to put you into a position to lose your identity as being Oh, I'm the one that's, that's, that's made this city. Because the city were already made before you were born. It's just that now whatever you brought here is what you're talking about. You're the one that brought this evil here. I'm the one that changed these people and got them following me. Nobody's following Velma, but I don't care. Because as long as I have this Bible in my hand and I know God is teaching me and I'm not doing anything out there that you said I'm doing to deserve this treatment, I don't worry about what people are saying. But I'm going to tell you in a very conventional way. But there are times I'm unconventional and we and we all know where. And what we have here is um 
and tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. It's a promises, false promises. Because they're calling you and saying, I will fetch wine. Meaning that, come to my party. I'm going to have hors d'oeuvres, wine. It's going to be a politician there. A lot of great people. You know, and then all who? All the young girls looking for a husband are going to show up too. So that's, that's what he's talking about. So when you're around these type of institutions or these governments and parliaments and, and these balls and, 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 and weddings and funerals and, and, and uh, great uh, 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 events that has to do with um, people are just meeting and, and they're being um, rewarded for their good ethics or there's memorandums for their um, contrib contribution to society and they die. So there are so many different uh, events. We, we get the Oscar, we, we get uh, uh, so many different awards because we were cons chosen and voted in by producers, by people who have watched us and we brought ratings in. So this is what this person is bickering about. I brought ratings. I made this city. I made all these people. If it wasn't for me, they would have never had a party. They would have never had, had that drink and they wouldn't have enjoyed themselves. And you two would have never been married if it wasn't for me. Although I tried to break y'all up and, and let somebody dance with your, with your husband when you're a newlywed. But because you left there, your husband followed you. You're lucky. Because if he didn't follow you, he would have been mine too. Thank you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. This is Velma Bland, Dr. Bland, Black Rodeo, whatever you want to call me. I wish you all the best. I really do. I'm not trying to fight anybody. I'm not trying to put anybody down. But um, one hand wash the other. And um, I do wash my hands. I'm going to show you next time what God say. It's not how clean your hands are. It's where you stuck is where you place them. Do you have evil hands? If you place them in a bowl of evil, washing your hands, it would never, ever get cleansed. <laughs> Thank you. You all have a good day. Velma.